Hello all, welcome to our second video on software development targeting Zing platform. This is a continuation of what we discussed in the previous video, so I am starting with our hello world example. So first thing I want to discuss uh, is some of the constraints that you are going to face when you develop software targeting embedded system. In a traditional software environment, you are targeting very powerful computers, generally uh, PCs or server class machines. These machines, they have very powerful processor. Their main memory is quite large, uh, several gigabytes, and they have very large secondary memory, maybe several terabytes. But when you are targeting an embedded system, that is not the case. So let's take the example of our uh, Z-board itself. So the processor available here is a um, Cortex A9 processor, which is not very powerful. The main memory available to you is only 512 MB and uh, currently we don't have any secondary memory but setboard it's capable of having SD card so which can be used as a secondary memory which is actually 4 GB what you get with the box. So you have a lot of constraints here that means your program size should be quite limited because your mem main memory size is quite limited and you should write your code very efficiently such that it can be executed by this weak processor in a efficient manner. Okay, so these are some of the challenges that you are going to face when you target an Ember platform. Now, last time I mentioned this is how we write Hello World program traditionally in, in C code. And traditionally you are targeting a standard PC. And everything works, so you, you don't find any difference when the code is running on a computer or on a Z platform. Now, the issue here is the size of the executable generated from this program is quite large. So, let's look at the ELF file. So, I showed you where this file is in last video. It is 158 kilobytes. Okay, so a small program such as Hello World is taking 158 KB. Maybe if you use a C compiler for your computer and write this Hello World, I guess most probably it is smaller than this. Now one major reason for this is so called um, static linking. And the so called dynamic linking. Okay, so let me try to explain this. Most of your traditional software, they are using so-called dynamic linking. So let me take the example of Hello World and explain it. So in your program, you have the printf function. Okay. Now the code for printf is not written by you. And you are told if you are using printf, just use this header file and magically everything happens. Now the the header file stdio.h it doesn't have the code for printf. Okay, what stdio.h has is the declaration for printf. It gives the name of the function and what kind of arguments printf is going to take. That's all the information here. Now, when the compiler compiles your code, what it does is it checks for printf. It checks whether this function is declared in your program. No then he will check whether it is declared in stdio.h, yes, so your program gets compiled. No compilation errors are generated. Now, after compilation comes the linking stage. It is during linking that the code for printf gets linked with your code. Okay, So there is a .o file generated after compilation, the object code for your program that dot o object file will be linked with the code for printf which is already compiled and stored somewhere in your computer with your object code and you get the final executable now this linking process can happen in two ways in the first way okay as i mentioned there's a dot o file for your code there's a dot o file for printf already somewhere these two gets compiled by the linker and you get a single executable .exe or .elf or .bin file. 
and this is what we call as a static linking okay during static linking the code corresponding to the functions are linked with the code corresponding to your program statically and you get a single executable file now the other method is this linking doesn't happen during the, 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 the linking I mentioned before this linking happens when your program runs okay so again he compiles your code and there will be a reference to the printf function and the code for printf is already compiled and sitting somewhere in your computer that code doesn't get linked with your program okay so the code for printf is uh, sitting separately your code is sitting separately and when the program executes when the program runs and the processor has to execute the function uh, code corresponding to printf that already compiled code for printf gets executed okay so in a windows environment that is usually done using a dll file dynamically linked file or in a linux environment we usually do it using a shared object file shared library file now this dynamic linking helps in reducing your code size why because if you are doing static linking every program that is using printf will have the code corresponding to printf in its executable because they are combined statically if we are using dynamic linking the code corresponding to pin printf okay doesn't have to be part of your executable that is sitting separate your code is sitting separate and during runtime your code runs and whenever the processor has to print he runs the code for printf then it comes back to your program and uh, it executes the remaining code okay so the dynamic linking greatly helps in reducing the code size now in an embedded environment again depending upon what kind of operating system you are using dynamic linking may not be possible for example we are using the standalone OS here which is a very primitive operating system you cannot do dynamic linking that means you will have to go for static linking that is why your code size is quite large so this 158 KB it didn't come from from simply by writing these many lines it became that big because this executable has the code for printf embedded inside that that's why it is that big in your traditional C code with this executable your exe file it might not have the code corresponding to printf the code corresponding to printf is sitting somewhere else and only during execution these two get linked so what can we do for reducing our code size here okay so in in most cases the embedded development platforms or the software development platform for embedded systems they give additional functions which are much simpler and which takes less amount of memory for example in in this particular example instead of print a function i am going to use simply so called the print function okay i'm just writing print hello world instead of printf now there is no function called print in standard c library there is no function called print declared in stdio.h so if you do it in a pc environment if you use your standard compiler this will definitely give an error saying the function print is not declared now here if i do it it won't give an error but it is definitely saying uh, giving a warning saying the function print is not declared yes you didn't declare it and this function is also not declared here it is actually declared inside a header file called sil underscore print of dot h now you will you will encounter a lot of header files and functions starting with sil underscore in silinx sdk because these are silinx functions and silinx header files so they put the prefix sil to indicate that Okay, now your code compiled perfectly. Now, if you check the code size, now it is 156 KB. Before uh, 
it was 458 kb so you're basically saving two kilobytes actually but remember you are saying two kilobytes for one print statement okay so your program may be having several tens of hundreds of print statements so you will be saving quite a lot of memory if you use print statement instead of print f statement now of course there are certain restrictions you can use print statement only for printing constant strings if you want to print say a variable an integer variable like this the syntax is perfectly fine for printf but it doesn't work with print okay so print take can take only constant strings this is giving a syntax that are saying uh, too many arguments print can stay take a single argument which is a constant string now for printing variables we have another function called sil underscore printf this function is also declared in the same header file so keep the header file here and write it like that and it compiles and if I, if I run the code you can see file gets printed here okay what is the code size here let's check it it's 157 kb now instead of using sil printf if i were using printf it is 196 kb it's quite large actually about 40 kb difference is there okay so there are benefits of course for using sil printf instead of simply printf now the limitation of sil printf is it can print integer it can print characters it can print strings but it cannot print 14 point number so if you have a statement like this for printing 14 point number nothing gets printed okay so you cannot use sil printf for printing floating point or double type of variable but it can be used for uh, integers characters as well as string so the thumb rule is if you want to print only strings constant strings use print if you want to print anything except floating points or double variable use sil printf if you have to print floating point number use sprint of okay so this will help you to save some memory